Hello, and welcome to Tripwire's Threat Intelligence University. This presentation is entitled, These Aren't the Threats You're Looking For. Before we begin, let me introduce you to myself. My name is Paul Norris, and I work for Tripwire as a Senior Systems Engineer, and I've been in this role now for just over three months. I'm based in the UK office in Maidenhead. In my previous roles, I have come from the industry, working in information security as a technical security manager for over 15 years, covering all aspects of information security, from audit and compliance, all the way through to computer forensics and project work. During this session, we are going to cover what is perceived as a threat. I'll go in and cover some of the most common threat actors in play today. I'll also discuss what the challenges organisations face when responding to cyber threats. We'll then talk about threat intelligence and discuss some different types of threat intelligence supported by Tripwire. And then finally, we'll drop out into a demonstration using Tripwire integrated with ThreatGrid. So let's begin with, what is a threat? Effectively, a threat is anything that has the potential to cause disruption to a computer system. A deep understanding of the threat helps to protect, better protect an organization. Any credible threat must have three attributes, the intent, the opportunity, and capability. The intent will depend on the type of actor. For example, hacktivists may seek to disrupt a web service in order to send a politically motivated message. An organised crime group may pursue credit card details for financial gain. Or a foreign intelligence service may seek to acquire intellectual property in order to strengthen its economy. The opportunity defines the availability of an entity for exploration. For example, an actor may identify a vulnerable server on a victim network, or use an upcoming event to increase the likelihood of an employee opening a spear phishing email. The capability describes the resources available to an actor in order to achieve their goal. These resources include the availability of finances, skill and people. Whilst there may be many threat actors with the intent to attack, Without the appropriate level of capability and the right opportunity, they will be unlikely to succeed. In most cases, threats are intentional. Some common sources of threats are from state-sponsored attacks. Espionage between nation states is hardly new, but in the last few decades the world has moved into a whole new realm of spying, cyber espionage. This new form of espionage is affecting the economic and political relationships between nation states, as well as changing the shape of modern warfare. Therefore, in spite of the advantages brought by modern technology, there is a whole new set of problems as well. An increasing number of states see the benefit of conducting cyber espionage to acquire highly valuable foreign intelligence and intellectual property, often with few repercussions. Those nations who do not have the technical capability can now purchase commercial offensive services. Organised crime It is now claimed that organised cybercrime groups have now reached the level of sophistication where their technical capabilities are on par with those of a nation state. These gangs are capable of building complex systems aimed at stealing money and intellectual property on a ground scale. Organisations may become a victim through the actors' wide and indiscriminate targeting. For example, an organised crime group might spread malware which steals bank account details from an infected PC. That same malicious software would also use effective machines to carry out a denial of service attack against the bank in order to distract the bank security team while the gang cleans out the bank accounts using the stolen account credentials. Hacktivists. These are individuals or groups who use computers in an attempt to achieve political change. Activities include attacking websites or illegally accessing a computer network. Hacktivists have proven that even relatively uncoordinated groups with it only a basic level of technical capability can cause significant disruption to major services. 
Hacktivists predominantly seek to further their cause through disruption of popular online services. In order to carry out their operations, hacktivists might create new tools or integrate or use a variety of software tools readily available on the internet. It seems the headlines today contain hacktivist attacks on large organisations, such as Ashley Madison, Target and more recently ISIS. Hacktivist activities span many political ideals and issues. Insider Threat Current or former employees or associates whose level of authorised access and trust is misused in order to obtain access to systems and information for the purpose of espionage, sabotage or other objectives. The insider threat poses one of the greatest risks to all organisations. Either co-opted, most likely the groups we have previously mentioned, or self-motivated or unwitting, there are numerous examples that have resulted in compromise. And finally, what's next? Who knows what's around the corner? It's the unknown unknowns. So what are the challenges organisations face today? Advanced attacks, limited resources and time, and limited context from tools. We all know the first two issues. With more advanced, zero-day and targeted attacks, it's now more than ever difficult to detect them quickly and respond in time. And no one has unlimited resources to address the large number of malicious incidents. It's a problem of scale. How do you quickly focus your resources on the greatest risk to your most critical assets? But the real technology issues, fragmented tools and a lack of context around these threats and assets they impact. Organisations have installed millions of dollars worth of security tools, but the problem is they lack depth and context and are very siloed. Security executives need high confidence, actionable information with context about the threat and assets impacted by them, and if there are other malware and vulnerabilities associated with these threats and assets. With Tripwire, the integration with advanced malware analysis partners such as Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, Checkpoint and Lastline enables real-time detection, analysis and verification of known, zero-day and advanced threats. And the integration with threat intelligence indicators of compromise providers such as CrowdStrike, iSight Partners and Sultra enables proactive monitoring as well as forensic capability for any previous compromises helping customers answer the question, have I been compromised and how long have I had this? With Tripwire's business context combined with this threat intelligence integration, customers can now prioritize and accelerate their time to detect and remediate known and zero day advanced threats across their networks. We'll now go through a few use cases on how threat intelligence can be integrated into Tripwire. In this use case, we use community sourced indicators of compromise from partners such as Sultra. Indicator feeds are fed into an internal taxi server hosted on the Tripwire Enterprise console. Scans can then be initiated against stored data from previous scans as well as start to monitor for new indicators or threats in new changes. As soon as a threat is detected, Tripwire will drive a workflow to assist the user to investigate and remediate the compromised system. Advanced Malware Identification Identify advanced threats on high-risk assets through integration to malware analytic services and appliances using Sandbox technology. First of all, Tripwire Enterprise Agent on the endpoint detects a new binary introduced to the system. Tripwire Enterprise will then validate the hash and then send the file or hash to a cloud threat intelligence provider, such as Palo Alto Networks, ThreatCloud, Lastline, Cisco ThreatGrid, or Bluecoat. The provider will then analyze the file or hash in their appliance or sandbox environment, and if a new threat is detected, return valuable metadata back to Tripwire Enterprise. Once the intelligence is received, Tripwire Enterprise can then drive a workflow and one of those may be to update threat prevention rules or aid other technologies to conduct real-time blocking of these infections on the endpoint. 
We are now going to demonstrate how Tripwire Enterprise can integrate with cloud-based threat intelligent providers. In this demonstration, we are going to conduct each step manually so you can see the process Tripwire Enterprise takes to validate potential threats. It's important to note this whole process can be fully automated. In the demo, we are going to introduce the environment and then download some live malware onto a Windows 7 endpoint. Please note, this demonstration has been conducted in an isolated environment and Tripwire do not recommend you try this at home. We are then going to instruct Tripwire to scan the endpoint for any new executables. Once we have detected the new files, we are going to manually run an action to check to see if the files have been seen before in our local database. We are then going to add the files to a queue that will later be submitted to the threat provider for analysis. We are then going to add the files to a queue that will later be submitted to the threat provider for analysis. For this demo, we are adding in this step, but this can be configured to submit the file to the provider in real time, removing the requirement to queue the process. We will then execute a script in Tripwire Enterprise to send the files to Cisco Threat Grid for analysis. Once analyzed, we will then show the files as a threat within Tripwire Enterprise, along with the report information from Cisco. Okay, let's begin the demo. Let's first of all log into our demonstration machine. Let's take us to our nodes page, and I want to highlight which machine we got connected to Tripwire Enterprise at the moment. It's currently a Windows 7 machine with this IP address here. Just flick over to this machine now. You can see I've got a folder on there called SQL and bat slash threat intelligence with nothing in it. In this demonstration, we'll be downloading some malware from a malware traffic analysis.net. So the first thing we need to do is create a rule to monitor the folder uh, on our endpoint. So if we click the rules tab, and then create a new rule. The first rule we need to create is a Windows file system rule. And let's give it a name. We need to now give it a start point for which we want to start monitoring from. So this instance, we're going to monitor that threat intelligence folder I created on the endpoint. We also want to recurse into the directories here, so we're going to leave that checked. And now we need to define a criteria. In this instance, we want to make sure we're looking at content and permissions, and we ensure that the MD5 hash value is checked, because that is the value we're going to be verifying the files against. And finally, we also want to only look at executables in this demonstration. So I'm going to put as an include filter star.exe. For this demonstration, we're not going to do any real-time monitoring. Everything we're going to do is going to be manually done. So we're going to leave that unchecked for now. Let's go ahead and finish this wizard. Now that we've created our role, the first thing we need to do is create a baseline of what files are stored in the current SQL and backslash threat intelligence. Let's go ahead and select our endpoint and then run a baseline against that now. So let's select the relevant rule we just created. Let's just scroll down. There it is, monitor folder for new files. Let's just select that. That's now going to run a baseline against those files there. So let's just refresh our display. And there we see it, an additional folder added under threat detection called monitor folder for new files. Let's return back to our endpoint now, and let's now download some malware samples. This is a sandboxed environment, so I've taken precautions here to prevent any of this malware being exposed. I strongly don't advise doing this uh, outside of a sandboxed environment. So let's download some examples here. The Angle and EKs are good examples. Let's get three samples, just bring those down to the local box. Save them locally as zip files. Do one more. 
There we go. Save that forward. Let's take a look at those files now. Now let's expand these. Now, as an added layer of protection, these these uh, zip files have been supplied with a password. So I'm just going to expand these zip files now into the relevant folders uh, by entering that relevant password. And the last one. Okay, so if we look inside these folders now, you can see there's a number of files, including an application. Let's look at the last one. There's an application there as well. Now we've made changes to our monitor folder. We need to instruct Tripwire to run a check against that folder to see if there's any changes. Normally we'd have this automated, but for the demo today we're doing everything manually. So I've just done a check on that folder now. Let's refresh and see what changes has been detected. Here we can see the folders and the executables themselves. Another feature in Tripwire Enterprise is the ability to create charts and reports in dashboards. For this demonstration, I've created four reports in a dashboard that shows various stages we'll take as we interrogate malware in this demo. The first report we will look at more closely is the Executables Discovered report. This is shown that there are three files identified. The other three reports will go into more detail later in the demo. Let's click down and take a closer look at what those files are. Here you can see the three individual pieces of malware that we downloaded on our Windows 7 endpoint earlier. In order for us to take any actions against these files, we need to switch to Elements view. From here, we can select the three files and then we can choose an action we would like to run against these. The first action we are going to do is run a quick threat check. This will check the MD5 hashes of these files and the local cache database we have collated from the threat grid. If there are any matches, the relevant metadata will be added to the files and flag the files as malicious. Again, for demonstration purposes, we are doing these steps manually. This can all be automated. Let's return back to our custom dashboard and refresh the view. Here we can see that three files have been added to Files for Full Analysis report. Therefore, the file hashes were not found in our local cache from ThreatGrid. Let's click the chart now and open up our results. Again, we see our same three files as we identified before. For us to take action against these, we'll open them up in the Elements view again. This time, we will check our three files and run a different action against them. We are now going to add them to the queue for full threat analysis. The reason we add them to the queue is so that we can add other files to the queue and then schedule a full threat check, sending all the files at once. Again, this whole process can be fully automated. We're back at the dashboard again, let's refresh the view. We can now see three files added to the report queue for ready for full threat check. Let's click on the report, expand the view, and in the queue we see our usual suspects. Now we'll open the files in Elements view again and take action against them. This time, the action we'll now run is Full Threat Check. This is a back-end script that executes to send the files up to ThreatGrid for analysis. Once the analysis is complete, the results are returned to Tripwire Enterprise and the relevant metadata added to the files and flag the files as malicious if they score 70% or higher. This of course can be customised. Okay, let's now tidy up our windows, let's close these down and return back to our dashboard and then let's hit the refresh button to update the reports. As we refresh the dashboard, you will notice there are entries on the report Malware on Nodes. Let's click this report in the dashboard and open up the Malware report. In this report, you can see the name of the file along with the URL that has been inserted into the metadata by ThreatGrid. If we select this URL and browse to it, this will take you directly to the report on ThreatGrid's website that goes into great detail about what the file is and what it will do to your systems. Cisco's ThreatGrid is just one of the many technology partners Tripwire integrates with. For more information on who we integrate with, please visit our website and search for Technology Alliance Partners.
Now that we have found malware or threats on a system, what should you do about it? Within Tripwire, there are a number of different actions you can take. For example, the common ones are alerting users via email or adding entries to syslogs, etc. There is one action though that adds versatility to Tripwire, executing a script. In this example, we can open up the report that contains our three files. As we want to run an action against them, we need to show them in Elements view. Before we run any actions, let me rearrange our windows so that you can see Windows 7 desktop in the background that shows the malware. As you can see, these are the files that we downloaded earlier in our demo. Let's focus on one of the executables, the 2015-0715 one. In Tripwire, we will select that file and then from the Actions menu under My Threat Remediation Action, we'll select Delete This Element. As I hit the OK button, notice instantly the executable on the endpoint is deleted. Let's now go ahead and repeat this for the other two executables. As I hit the OK button, the files are deleted. Let's verify that now. Another use case we can do with threat intelligence is the ability to check for the presence of files from known hashes. A hash file consists of a mixture of SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-512 or MD5 hashes can be supplied by a number of third parties such as iSight Partners, ThreatStream, CrowdStrike, etc. With this information, we can search changed files within Tripwire Enterprise and then output the results in a comma delimited format for further analysis. You can then generate a workflow based on the findings. Time for another demo. We are now going to demonstrate how Tripwire Enterprise can use hash databases from a commercial threat intelligence service, or IOCs. For this demonstration, I'm going to search for three known hash files within our changed data within Tripwire Enterprise. I'm going to run this from the command line on our Tripwire console, which incidentally can be installed on a Windows or Linux based server. We are going to be using TE Commander, which is our command line API for Tripwire Enterprise, to search for elements that match our hashes. Here is our file bad underscore hashes.txt that contains three MD5 hashes. I'm now going to run the script to search against it. The results are instant. You can see the column titles along with detailed information output to the screen in common delimited format. From here you could also redirect the output to a CSV file. As we are nearing the end of the presentation today, I would like to draw your attention to the Resource Centre where there are a number of white papers and articles available on some of the integrations we spoke of today, such as Cisco Threat Grid, Lastline, Palo Alto Networks and Threat Cloud. Feel free to drop by after this presentation. So let's wrap up now and look at the key takeaways from this presentation. First of all, understand what the different types of threats out there are and what ones would most likely impact your organization. Would the attackers be interested in your intellectual property rights or are they looking for financial gain or defacement to the shop window of your organization? Secondly, what's stopping you from within your organization on implementing some form of threat intelligence or detection services? Is it down to not enough buy-in from senior management to fund such projects? Or is it the case of, why do we need to verify systems for presence of threats when our perimeter is already secured? And finally, what can you do to be ahead of the game? We featured our Tripwire Enterprise software in the demonstrations today, which helps you identify new and modified changes to your systems. With these changes, we are able to help validate those files by partnering with a number of third parties who conduct threat analysis. And that's it, you made it to the end. Thank you very much for your time today and don't forget to stop by the Resource Centre for brochures and white papers. Enjoy the rest of the event.